Hello, welcome to another pedal out video. Now today, I promised this in my first Audi TT Mark 1 video, so today I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to tell you why I bought a Mark 1 Audi TT. So I apologize if this is a little bit rambly, but why did I buy my uh, a Mark 1 Audi TT? So the best car, cars, because I had two of them that I have owned in the past has been um, the Porsche, Porsche, people don't like me saying Porsche, Porsche 944. I had an S2 and a turbo. I had a 250 turbo and an S2, the three litre, four cylinder, biggest capacity natural aspirated engine. Anyway, that's beside the point. And I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I loved the front engined, rear wheel drive, four seater, two door coupe layout. And for me, um, in terms of that as a car, it sounds like quite a simple recipe. I've always struggled to find something that kind of hits that mark from a German manufacturer. Uh, when Porsche stopped Porsche, stopped making the 944, they went to um, the Boxster, which obviously doesn't have seats in the back. And there's always, for me anyway, this is where I am in life with having nieces and family and friends, and my own kids. There was always a need to have back seats, so kind of always needed them. Anyway, I had, as a result, a real kind of affinity with German cars from there on in, really. And the only other kind of type of car that really ticked those boxes of engine up front, um, drive out the back, and four seats was obviously a BMW. And started with a three series BMW, got the convertible because I really liked it, got the diesel because I needed the economy, it was the 330 diesel, really enjoyed it. See uh, other video on my channel, you can have a look at that car. Um, from very early on when I was first just getting into video editing. Uh, so at Affinity of German Cars, that was kind of what I was after. And I've always stuck with them. And to this day, I have um, my kind of um, almost now weekend and summer car, um, E93 BMW M3, which I absolutely love to bits. But it's um, kind of arguably my prize and joy and prize and joy, pride and joy, and my prize and joy. I do not necessarily like driving it in winter when the roads are salty. I like to keep it nice, keep it in the garage. It cost me a lot of money. So I needed a daily driver, ended up with the Mark 1 TT. And I think I mentioned this on my previous video. I had been on the lookout for one and I never really liked uh, Audi TTs before. In fact, it's fair to say I hated them, which I don't think is very fair. Um, on them at all because since buying this car I've really kind of uh, fallen for it so I bought it for all of the reasons that I kind of listed and in terms of it's albeit it isn't rear wheel drive it's a quattro so it's kind of four wheel drive albeit I think most of the bias is towards the front wheels um, it is German Audi German yeah um, it's stylish it's quick um, it's as quick as you want car to be in modern traffic with its 225 brake horsepower 1.8 turbocharged engine um, which is obviously a little bit quicker than the 180 version which only gets one exhaust this gets the two exhausts at the back which I really like from an aesthetic point of view if nothing else and um, I get two seats in the back which when you've got two kids it's exactly what you need and I think it's a, a, a really good thing that this car shares uh, the platform of a Golf because what it means is uh, parts are cheap. Um, so it shares a lot of componentry and parts with um, VW Golf. So it costs, hopefully, um, a reasonable amount of money to run. It also, so a lot of people say of modern Porsches, so since the kind of the 911 when air cooled, um, had one of them as well, the 996. Sorry, since, whoa, scrap that, rewind it. Since the 911 dropped air-cooled around 1996, 
Now I recognise for most people that's like in a totally different era of time, um, but it is still um, showing my age within my lifetime. People complain, complain, but there was a lot of um, uh, commentary, I suppose, uh, that modern Porsches just felt like big BMWs, and, I was, and to some extent, I could kind of, kind of get that. Um, oh no, that's not true. Modern Porsches felt a little bit like big Audis. Well, I'd never really that into Audis, to be honest. Um, but I actually think it's the other way around. Driving this Audi feels, reminds me of my old 944, and I kind of like that. And it, and it reminds me more of my 944 than any BMW that I've had. I kind of thought, you know, German cars, um, ticking all those boxes that I kind of wanted and had within that 944 package I thought I would um, get that from BMW and to some extent I did but probably not as much as I do in this Audi TT um, yeah and that's kind of a lot of the reason I, don't, I mean there's loads more reasons um, just look at the, the thing the thing just looks um, bananas and it did at the time and I think, and everybody, I, I don't think anybody says that the Mark 1 Audi TT is not aging well. I think it's aging fantastically well. Uh, I kind of, and this is a rarity, normally when new models come out and iterations come out, and they, let's be honest, manufacturers do it because this is, we're, we're fickle people as human beings and consumers in general. Most people are pretty fickle and don't like driving kind of an old, oldish model. So fashions change, people's perception of fashion changes, and they get bored um, to some extent. And manufacturers have to reinvent their models and come up with newer ones so people continue to buy them. And you can see that if you look across the kind of manufacturing numbers for the Mark 1 Audi TT, demand must just kind of drop. They launch the new one, everybody buys it, drops, and then they launch another new model. Obviously, there are a whole load of other reasons from a, a technological and environmental and government and legislation point of view, all of those reasons as well. Um, but this is one of those cars, I think, that uh, could have taken on that kind of mantle of um, the Type 2 V-Dub camper that continued to be made in Brazil. And uh, same as like the original Volkswagen Beetle, same as the... Um, is it the Mark 1? Oh no, the Mark 2 Golf in South Africa. Um, same as the um, original Volvo XC90 is now being called the XC90 Classic. They shipped all the tooling over into um, China and they're making the XC90 Classic. There are some cars that get it so right from the off when they first come out that manufacturers just decide and I think consumers decide oh Ferrari coming past this looks quite nice whoa it's gorgeous um FF no it's not an FF it's a 599 I think oh I don't know um manufacturers decide to sell the tooling to somewhere else and um, continue to make them um, happened with one of the Audis and Seat and they rebranded it gosh I can't remember the name of it I'll look it up I'll add it in below Seat whatever it was it wasn't Leon it wasn't Toledo something else but you know what I mean the the, um, the model of Audi I'm gonna say the A4 got re-engineered by Seat they kept making it um, that's probably not a good example because I don't think any uh, or those kind of Audis are as classic as the VW Beetle or the Tag 2 camper van. Anyway, this car, I feel, would have been worthy of keeping all the tooling for making it and some other manufacturer picking it up and carrying on making it. Why would you not do it? Um, it's four-wheel drive, so you can use it all year round in wet, snowy weather. Grips really well. People say uh, the handling isn't great, but do you know what? I mean, I'm not the type of person like most people who drives uh, with the ass hanging out of the back going around every single roundabout that just isn't how people drive you know you're left with a car which German build quality beautiful design exquisite attention to detail I think nobody can disagree with that four seats and a boot that is pretty practical dare I say it um, and easy to kind of access the boot as well. 
You haven't got the hugest amount of room in the back for the kids, let's be honest. And you wouldn't put any grown-ups in there, but come on, I mean, who cares? It's only the same with any modern Mini or Fiat 500 or anything like that. So this car, uh, I found, um, to, in my mind anyway, I, 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 I'm of the opinion that I found the perfect sweet spot that I was looking for. In an, yeah, in an ideal world, for my daily driver, it needed to be manual. I, I, I kind of wanted a manual gearbox. Driving a Volvo XC90 with a slushy auto box is great. Uh, driving a BMW M3 with flappy paddles is awesome. But I do miss the engagement that driving a manual gives you um, in a car. It's going dark, so apologies for the dark light here. Um, so it needed to be manual, which is car obviously is, which is cool. And in an ideal world, I'd have gone rear wheel drive, front engine, MX-5 kind of car for the type of money that I wanted to spend. Now, um, the one problem with that is uh, no seats in the back. And it's kind of fair to say, well, couldn't you just use your other cars for when you needed to have back seats? And that's true. But I've been around and had cars long enough to know there will always be a time when um, we need to uh, have the car have two seats and so we can put the kids off for whatever reason in the back. So you needed to have back seats. So that ruled out right or wrongly an MX-5. Then you're into, well, what can you buy for two grand that's fun, sporty with a manual gearbox? Uh, Minis, Mini Cooper S, the old, the supercharging one. Uh, yes, you could. Um, but we've already had one of them. See my other video for that. It was a Clubman. Really enjoyed it. And um, the Clubman is obviously too expensive. Um, I wanted to buy a car that was um, kind of cheap to maintain and run. So um, that left the Audi TT. And the more I read about the Audi TT, the more I researched it and got into it, and the more it kind of got under my skin and I kind of fell for it, it in a big way. And the Facebook group for this car is like no other forum or car group I think I've ever had. It's the most active um, Facebook group ever. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I should put a link below. So if you own a Mark One Audi TT, get on that Facebook group community. If you're watching from that Facebook group community, guys, you are fantastic and awesome. In fact, my whole Facebook chill out time viewing what's going on has now just disappeared um, in terms of my friends and family. Who are they? I don't even know who they are anymore. Um, all my, the posts that I read, you can find mostly um, all of them are uh, interesting right? once you actually own the car uh, is the Audi um, Mark 1 TT forum so much so I bought the sticker the other day and I can't wait to stick it on so that's good anyway um, I promised in my first uh, Audi TT video first impressions video have a look here please note this is a shameless plug for my other YouTube content terms and conditions do not apply but please try and click and share and subscribe that I would do a why I bought an Audi TT video. So that was it. If you like it, I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to subscribe. And most importantly, um, come back again because I'm gonna be doing more Audi TT videos very soon. Thanks for watching. Look at this Type 3 VW. Oh, that is a nice bus. There's a nice VW bus. Can you see it? It's blown. Still got the engine at the back, air cool. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's the sound of a Volkswagen engine as they should all be used to be.